Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, May 7th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from San Francisco, California. Today we got two different VPN related vulnerabilities. The first one affects multiple VPN implementations and relies on DHCP options to configure a routing. The vulnerability was documented by researchers from Leviathan Security Group. For example, as I record this podcast, I'm connected to a hotel wireless network. To connect to the network, I need to accept a DHCP lease. This lease typically includes at least a default gateway, an IP address, and possibly DNS servers. The VPN is only enabled after the laptop is connected to the local network. After all, it has to reach the VPN server. A decent VPN will usually override the DNS servers provided by DHCP, so that's not the problem here. And then add a new route that will send all traffic that's not local to the VPN interface. However, DHCP has an option to configure specific routes. This option, option number 121, is implemented on many current operating systems. I believe Android was an exception and has been around for about 20 years. Linux has a feature called network namespaces that can be used to overwrite these routing rules. So Linux can be configured to actually prevent some of the issues. But basically what's happening is that the DHCP server will advertise a more specific route using option 121. Typically, if there are conflicting routes to a particular destination, the more specific one is being used. And that's how an attacker who has control over the local DHCP server could trick you to leak some traffic outside of the VPN. Windows, Mac OS, uh, the workarounds are less straightforward here. Uh, You may be able to ignore option 121, and that's probably the easiest fix, in particular for something like a public Wi-Fi and such. I don't think any of them relies on this option to actually make the network work. Another option is to isolate your system from the untrusted network. So for example, you're using uh, some wireless access point or maybe you're running your actual system that's connecting to the VPN in a virtual machine. That way the system that is actually the VPN endpoint will uh, not be connected directly to the untrusted network, but there will be this buffer. Your DHCP lease is coming from your own uh, DHCP server from your own access point. The disadvantage of this option, of course, is that it uh, does add yet another layer of NAT typically and such, so uh, that may uh, have some performance impact. WireGuard, OpenVPN, doesn't really matter uh, what exact VPN you're using as long as routing rules are being used to direct traffic through the VPN, you may be vulnerable. The next uh, VPN issue is less severe. It's a specific implementation here, the Mulvat VPN service. There's also a somewhat common issue with uh, VPN services. If you are switching from one server to another, maybe uh, for performance reasons or such, there is this little gap where the VPN is not established. And it's tricky not to leak any data during that time. Now, Mulvat uh, has a specific feature that they call a kill switch. So the idea of that feature is that no traffic will be sent if you're not connected to the VPN. Many other implementations sort of have similar features, but it's notoriously tricky to implement this. This issue in particular shows up on Android if you're not using the Android uh, DNS. APIs. And yes, uh, many browsers, and that's of course what most people are caring about, are using uh, the standard socket implementation, the get adder info uh, API. And if you're using that get adder info API, uh, then your DNS queries may be leaked during that transition period. 
And the Cisco Talos research team has made public details about a vulnerability in Tiny Proxy. Tiny Proxy is an HTTP and HTTPS proxy, and well, as the name implies, it distinguishes itself with its small footprint. The vulnerability is a use after free vulnerability in the connection header. Exploitation of the vulnerability will lead to arbitrary code execution. Sadly, there is no patch available. Cisco has notified the Tiny Proxy team in December, just before the holidays, but still uh, they gave them until now to actually fix this. And well, a fix has not yet been released. The blog post by Cisco does also include a proof of concept exploit. And if you happen to be at RSA this week, uh, see Jason and me at our learning lab today on Tuesday at 1 p.m. Uh, this hands-on lab will focus on API security. It's two hours where we sort of go through various exercises. And of course, tomorrow on Wednesday afternoon, I'll again be part of the SANS Most Dangerous Threat Panel. So I hope to see you. If you want any stickers, I usually uh, carry them uh, with me. And uh, that's it for today. Uh, talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.